Crimson Peak is the latest movie from Guillermo del Toro and stars Tom Hiddleston, Jessica Chastain, and Mia Vashikovska. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. The movie takes place about a hundred years ago, and Mia Vashikovska plays Edith Cushing, an aspiring writer who falls in love with Tom Hiddleston's character, Sir Thomas Sharp. Sir Thomas is in America with his sister Lucille, played by Jessica Chastain, and they own a clay mining operation over in England, which has been struggling lately, but he has plans for a brand new mining machine that can turn the business around if only he can find some investors for it, and that is why he's currently in America. Edith and Tommy Boy end up falling in love, but unfortunately Edith's father, played by Jim Beaver, does not trust Thomas, either as a businessman or as a potential suitor for his daughter, and he tells him to piss off. Conveniently, he ends up getting murdered, so his opinion no longer matters and they're free to get married and run off to England. After arriving in England, Edith starts to notice some rather strange things about Sir Thomas and especially his sister, Lady Lucille, who is just a wee bit on the creepy side. Actually, extremely on the creepy side. And there's a supernatural element to this story as well, as every night after they arrive in London, Edith is woken up by some ghosts who appear to have been brutally murdered at some point. Well, the people were murdered. The ghosts weren't, because obviously they're already... You know what I meant. And so she starts exploring the house and piecing together clues to what the hell is going on here. First of all, this movie is visually damn near perfect. Everything from the costumes and the set design, the cinematography, the visual effects, all looks just breathtaking. The production design is almost a character unto itself. It is really well done, but if you've seen any of Del Toro's previous work, you'd probably expect that. I really like the design of the Sharp family estate, although I have to wonder why anyone would want to live there. I know it's the only thing they own, they make that perfectly clear in the movie, but... Man, this place is in bad shape. It's built on top of this huge clay deposit, very soft ground, and if you step on the floor in the right place, the clay starts to seep in through the floor, and he even says, yeah, this house has been sinking for quite some time, and it's also falling apart, as you can tell from that big-ass hole in the roof that is letting in a bunch of leaves and snow and God only knows what else. And if you go down in the basement, you got clay dripping off the walls, looks like they're bleeding. It looks pretty damn cool, actually. But yeah... And this house is about 10 times bigger than what they really need. There's a simple solution here. Tear down the fucking house, salvage what lumber you can, build a smaller house away from the giant mound of clay onto more solid ground. There you go. Problem solved. You don't have to worry about either sinking into the ground or having the house just cave in on you one night. I personally thought the ghosts looked very cool, although they weren't necessarily all that scary. But that is kind of the point, because this isn't really intended to be a ghost story, per se. I know the trailers are pretty much marketing this as a horror movie, but it's really not. And in fact, Del Toro himself has stated he was not happy with the marketing, because that's not what this movie is supposed to be. As I said, Edith is an aspiring writer, and the book she's writing that she presents to the publisher at the beginning of the movie, he takes one look at it and says, huh... So it's a ghost story. And she says, no, 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 no. The ghosts are just a metaphor. It's more of a mystery. Hmm. I think it needs a love story. That's pretty much the movie in a nutshell right there. It's a mystery with romance and the ghosts just happen to be there. Uh, I've seen Del Toro compare this movie to stories like Rebecca, and I was definitely getting that kind of a vibe while watching this movie. It's kind of like Rebecca, but with ghosts. And the ghosts are not supposed to be scary. The people are what's scary in this movie. Jessica Chastain especially. That woman is frightening. I mean, damn. I thought the acting was rock solid all across the board. Everyone did a fantastic job, especially Chastain. I know I just mentioned her, but I really have to say she was fantastic in this. Scary as all hell, but awesome. If this movie has a weakness, it is the story. Although, I'm not necessarily sure if weakness is the right word, because the story is not bad. It's perfectly serviceable, but when everything else in this movie is fantastic, when you have something that's just okay, it's going to look 
remarkably okay, if that makes sense. It just stands out all that much more and looks worse by comparison than it really is. A lot of it is very predictable, and without giving too much away, by the time you are done with the first act, you pretty much know everything that's going to happen in the second act. And once the second act begins, when they all arrive in London, the movie just kinda coasts along until Edith finally solves the big murder mystery and the third act can finally begin. But when the third act does begin, it's awesome. The last 15 minutes of this movie especially were amazing. Very well done, very entertaining, I really enjoyed it. Getting to that took a while. And while Mia Vashikovska's performance was perfectly fine, there's really not a lot for her to work with here because her character is just kind of there. There's not much to it. The bit at the beginning about her being an aspiring writer, by the time they get to the second act, they've pretty much forgotten about that. Has no bearing on the plot at all. And she also solves the murder mystery in pretty much the most convenient way possible. She literally finds in a closet in this house the box of exposition. It's just, it's a box with three wax cylinder recordings that detail every single thing about exactly what happened in this house. And it's just a little too convenient. But for what it's worth, I was never actually bored. It just felt like there could have been more. In the end, it's a very well-made movie. I personally enjoyed it, and I would recommend it at least as a matinee. And that's all I got for Crimson Peak, so until next time, take care.